Welcome friends and family, my name is Skylint, and the title is not to be confused with Top 10 MMO RPG, just period, as a video game. What we are doing today is we're going to be talking about the Top 10 RPG MMO. This is going to be the Top 10 Best Story Content Inside the MMO Game Genre. So a lot of these MMO games, MMO FPS, RPG, whatever, they oftentimes, even if they are strictly an MMO RPG, actually don't really focus on the RPG aspect in their acronym there. So this is going to be a list that that really is going to order these games. I'm going to show the best ones that do actually focus on RPG mechanics and of course the story on the roles that the player can play in the game. Absolutely guys, if you're interested in that, hopefully you are because you clicked on the title, then these 10 games, I'm sure you'll at least find one that you can try out and hopefully have fun with. Let's go! Top 10 RPG MMO Coming in at number 10 is going to be a game of huge debate, and that's going to be Black Desert Online. And that's because Black Desert Online has incredibly cheesy voice acting most of the time, really awkward cinematics, and it's like tutorial quest line. And overall, it's just like extremely vague and not quite in a romantic Dark Soulsian kind of way. But the reason I'm going to put it on an RPG list specifically is because of the amity and the conversation mechanic of the game. So you can actually talk to NPCs, and depending on your knowledge, your overall, you know, actually understanding of the world around you, you can play like this little mini game and unlock actual new quests or things and stuffs and so mechanically yeah it is a actually fun kind of like little mini game that you can do and pursue but it's something that you can also use to immerse yourself in the world learn new details literally about the NPCs and how they interweave with other NPCs and yes that is a raw mechanic you actually use that knowledge and then move through the world and talk to other NPCs and further unlock new parts of the game as you do that so this is something that's common in many RPGs western or eastern but rarely seen in online games let alone an MMO and so for that reason for having such a massive RPG mechanic, fairly unique uh, inside the MMO genre, I'm going to put Black Desert online on the list. Coming in at number 9 is going to be World of Warcraft, and this is also on the list because of also all the extra mediums that it has. It has three Warcraft games if you want to add those. We've got a new movie, we've got books, we've got a whole lot of stuffs to really kind of immerse ourselves into, and then we, of course mechanically we could jump into the World of Warcraft. Now I think that the intro zones are freaking fantastic, some of the best ever, and the undead starting zone World of Warcraft is, in my opinion, completely uncontested, one of the most cinematic and amazing and rich and deep and just really unique storylines inside any MMO or just RPG period. It's freaking cool. And then also when you, if you look at the like end game for Legion and you look at the new expansions, it seems like the quests are becoming more and more cinematic, more like higher production, more expressive, more interesting. And while there might be some canonical errors and some immersion breaking things, you know, like with artifact weapons and stuff, still overall as a whole, World of Warcraft is becoming a more interesting story kind of. The problem is, is that the quest system is kind of a little bit, you know, linear, extremely. It's definitely dated and they've even been literally gutting some of the quests, such as class quests no longer existing. And the leveling process overall, past level 20, it, you know, the mid-game is just completely you know, boring, to be honest. But that very first, you know, first 1 to 20, and then of course the end game questing, that stuff, that stuff is so good. And of course the rich history of World of Warcraft makes it worthwhile to put it on this list. Now filling our number 8 spot is going to be Star Trek Online, which also featured in a top 10 free-to-play MMO list, which I think, you know, overall it's got some really nice redeeming features, but it is still a very niche game. It's very focused on people who enjoy the Star Trek universes and timelines, and yeah, it gets weird and complicated. It is a sci-fi game too as well, so further, you know, separating itself from other fantasy MMO RPG. But if you have any sort of interest in this game, I think that this is a game that really caters to, yes, maybe a smaller audience for a massively multiplayer online game, but those are some of the best games to really immerse yourself into their stories and their communities because the communities also help to create the stories. Now technically I think it's non-canon, it doesn't really fit or interweave into the TV show or the movies, but what it does do is fit very properly and help to expand those concepts, those ideas, and the overall aesthetic. So if you're interested in that, this is absolutely the game for you and there's really nothing else that competes that looks like this at all. And my number seven is going to be Lord of the Rings Online. It's going to be kind of similar to Star Trek Online in the fact that it caters to that particular audience that really enjoys Lord of the Rings stuff. Now, if you watch the movies, they are great movies on their own, but they really leave out pretty much everything, dude. The, the books are just incredibly massive, and I think it's really appropriate that they try to fill out a massively multiplayer online role-playing game with all of those rich details, and then maybe even a little bit more, a little bit of an expansion, kind of. So Lord of the Rings Online definitely is absolutely inside the universe, and it's going to feel like that, but at the same time, it's a little bit more usual in ways to other MMORPGs because it is a fantasy setting. So maybe even if you're not quite a fanatic over the Tolkien series, purely from a mechanical standpoint, Lord of the Rings Online may be showing its age a little bit, but definitely still worthwhile. 
Next up on the list, we have Star Wars The Old Republic. Now, this is heavily focusing on the RPG aspect, because in my opinion, they sacrificed a tremendous amount of the MMO portion of the game for this story, but that's kind of okay. If you are looking for a storied element, like essentially it is a single player experience, then you can have a pretty freaking cool time with this game. And then later kind of go into, you know, the expanded components, you know, the multiplayer, the PvP, stuff like that. And mechanically, it's kind of reminiscent of how World of Warcraft plays and feels, but it's set in the, yeah, well, Star Wars universe. And remember, it's not quite like the open-ish world that you see maybe in Black Desert or even like World of Warcraft. It's significantly more linear. So at the same time, maybe some people are kind of contesting this game's existence because there actually used to be some really, really good single player Star Wars RPGs. I understand that, but we aren't getting any of that anytime soon, it seems. So this is our best bet for now. And then, yeah, if you do it normally like MMOs, then this should be a pretty good fit. Coming in halfway on the list, we have a little game called RuneScape, which you might have heard of. So if you play the 2007 version, or if you're playing RuneScape 3, which is the one I'm going to suggest for this particular list, I think either way, you're going to have a really good time. Because no matter what, ever since the incarnation of RuneScape from basically a 2D game all the way to now RuneScape 3 with its enhanced graphics, it's really been the quests. The quest system and the unique RPG mechanics of RuneScape have really defined the game. And also, it's sort of like comic charm. It's kind of a funny game. It's kind of a silly game that's very aware of itself, that's very, very much knows that it's it's not hardcore like Ultima, and it's not quite as action-based as World of Warcraft. But what sells it, to me personally at least, is going to be these charming quests. Not only are the quests funny, you know, the quest text is concise, it's clean, it's simple, it's right there in your face, you get the joke, the punchline hits you hard. But it's not just that, it's not just hoo-hoo-ha-ha, it's not just for the lols, the quests actually themselves are kind of mechanically interesting. It reminds me a lot of uh, some older RPGs where you had to actually use your brain, it's not just your brawn, you're not just running in there with the biggest gear and just smashing things. So every quest is mechanically used unique, you're doing new things, each quest has unique storylines interweaved into them, and every NPC in this game has a purpose for the player and a meaning in the overall world. Now coming in at number four, we have Final Fantasy XIV, and overall the world building is pretty unique, coming from, you know, the Final Fantasy background. If you have played any of the Final Fantasies, you should know to expect something interesting and, and different. Well, Final Fantasy XIV is going to deliver that. It's going to uh, definitely sacrifice some of its PvP components for that focus and some of the other more, like, uh, usual MMO components, but Final Fantasy XIV has really freaking good dungeons and endgames, so mechanically, if you're interested in that, that's what you, you aim for in this game, uh, but also it just kind of looked graphically really, really awesome. It's very immersive in that way, but it's definitely no sandbox at all. Pretty, pretty much the opposite. It's very, very linear. But if you want linear progression, a linear story, and you really want to just play a, you know, a role that's somewhat predefined for you, for the most part, generally MMOs let you kind of define yourself. But Final Fantasy XIV is a little bit different. It really feels more or less like an RPG that happens to be massively online versus an MMO game that has RPG mechanics tacked on. If that makes sense, kind of. It's kind of what the point of this list is anyways. Oh yeah, I want to add bonus points here actually too. When Final Fantasy XIV turned into a Realm Reborn, they actually included that canonically into the story, how the previous version of the game was destroyed in a cataclysm, and well, it was a Realm Reborn now. Coming in at number three, we have the Elder Scrolls Online, and this is something more of like a realistic approach to high fantasy. It's not too comical, it's not too out there, it's actually a little bit more serious, and you can see that in the aesthetics and also the story. Now, if you like the Elder Scrolls overall, the Elder Scrolls games, that is, then I think you're going to really enjoy Elder Scrolls Online because everything is fully voice acted. And now with a lot of the updates since launch, the game feels more like a proper Elder Scrolls game versus just an MMO that happens to be kind of set in the universe. No, it actually feels a lot better now, and the expansion coming out soon seems like it's actually actually getting into some very pivotal story moments inside the overall Elder Scrolls universe, which has a lot of people very excited. Now, not only is everything fully voice acted, and it's pretty okay, it's pretty good, but the quests themselves are actually really fun and very interesting, and they interweave pretty well into the world. And also, for this type of game, there is a little bit of awkwardness when it comes to, you know, playing with another player, but for the most part, I really cannot think of any other way that this could be a better multiplayer game when it comes to these type of quests. A little bit of immersion breaking, but honestly, for an Elder Scrolls game, the job that they did is phenomenal. But again, I do want to reiterate that as an MMO, it might actually be a little bit more appropriate to play this game single player because there is a little bit of continuity issues if you do try to duo. Other than that, it's pretty neat. 
Now, my bias is definitely going to show, but at number two, I'm going to put Guild Wars 2. Now, Guild Wars 2 is an amazing game all in all, but I really appreciate its storied content. So you actually have a single player campaign that is ever expanding now because of the living story, which, yeah, as the name would suggest, it's literally living and breathing and it's consistently being episodically added on. Heck yes, hype. Anyways, so yeah, the game actually has a single player component where you can run through a campaign. There is actually decisions and choices to be made. You make friends, you meet characters, and then sometimes that'll interweave with the open world content, which I also really really appreciate, but then even the dungeons themselves have their own story modes, and even in the non-story modes, the explorable modes, they still have their own unique characters and stories as well. And then we move on to the mists, and then the raids, and then even just the open world content have their own stories that are told. Yes, it's not quite as in your face and cinematic, literally with cinematics like in the campaign, but there is so much more that other games, when they just focus on linear progression, they just focus on the dungeons, they just focus on one aspect, then they kind of miss out on everything else, and Guild Wars 2 tackles everything and has really awesome some storytelling in a multitude of different ways in a multitude of different directions. So for me, this is probably the safest bet. If you're looking for a game that has a unique world with a unique story that you can influence as a player and feel influential and feel powerful, then this is probably the most rewarding MMO to play for you. My number one pick for storied MMO, or you know, MMOs based on questing or yeah, RPG MMO. Yeah, I'm gonna put The Secret World. Now, in my opinion, I think that it's not quite as action packed as I would like. It's not quite as action packed as really the game kind of sold itself to be on. It kind of looks like an action RPG, but eh, whatever, that's debatable anyways. Opinions aside, this game focuses on its story content, on its underlying world building. You know, it's kind of cosmic horror y. Uh, overall, actually, it's kind of like a horror MMO, which is very unique, but it also just like in your face has true. RPG mechanics in the forefront. It has like this deck building mechanic where you can actually, you know, create a lot of different uh, builds and such, which is maybe reminiscent of something like Guild Wars 1, actually, but also its raw story is unique. It's a unique setting. I very much appreciate that. It's not too fantastic. It's definitely down to earth a little bit more, and it's definitely a lot darker than other MMOs, which probably makes it, you know, less colorful, less explosive. Probably why it did fly under the radar. But I think at the same time, it's also because of that, that the community has grown to be so interesting. Essentially, if you want an RPG, inside an MMO universe so that you can actually roleplay. If you're looking for an MMO so that you can actually play a character and properly RP, in my opinion, I feel this is that game to play. And for that reason, I really want to sell it. I really want to put it on number one for an RPG MMO list. So that's my list for top 10 RPG MMOs. And I think it's just kind of funny that a lot of MMORPGs don't actually focus on RPG content, but I think these 10 games do a pretty neat job. You know, they maybe have some unique mechanics. Maybe some of them are just hugely expansive or have a huge amount of back lore or additional content outside of the game itself and other mediums. You know, whatever the case, these games have stuff. They have stuffs to, to read, to immerse yourself into. And, you know, whatever stuffs you're into, I hope that you can find at least one of these games to, uh, well, just dive right in and become immersed yourself. But I know different strokes for different folks. People like different aesthetics and such. So if there's a game that maybe I missed or something, maybe I just wasn't aware of, please let me know in the comments below. These top 10s, community events, man, they're community endeavors. So please. And I just want to say thanks so much for joining this community, friends and family. Hopefully you had fun with the video and hopefully you have fun with one of these games. My name's Skylint. Please come back and I'll see you in the next one.